with us. And we also want to welcome those who is watching this broadcast. And also want to say thank you for being with us this evening. Amen. So we're going to open up in prayer in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you, Father, for who you are. We thank you, Father, for everything that you have done, continue to do in each of our lives. We thank you, Father, for your presence in this place, for your anointing in this place. And Father, we ask you, Lord God, that you speak to your people tonight, those who is here and those who is watching this broadcast, because we know that there is no distance in the spirit. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you encourage your people, that you bring the strength, Lord God, because Father, we ask you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, move by your spirit. And Father, as Pastor Larry come and minister to us, let him speak the word with the clarity, with the simplicity, Lord God, as he open his mouth and declare what you say. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your people have a revelation, knowledge, and understanding and impartation into the spirit of the revelation of your word. And Father, we're giving you all the praise and we're giving you all the glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Well, we, we always give glory to God because He deserves all the praise and He deserves all the glory. Amen. So we as a people of God continue to walk, what? By faith, right? We not walk by sight. We walk by faith. We not look at the circumstances or what may be going on around us or maybe certain spiritual warfare that some of us must, by my experience. But see, when we go through some spiritual warfare, that warfare is actually is not come to destroy you, but it's coming to make you stronger. And when you overcome certain obstacles of that spiritual warfare, you come into the next level. Amen. You're coming from victory to victory. Because as I said in the beginning, we are people who walk by faith. We are not look at that circumstances. See, because when we look at the circumstances, that circumstances sometimes can enlarge themselves. <laughs> and it looks like so big. It's like uh, like situation almost like impossible to come out. But see, God, the God who we serve, He is a God of impossibility. He is a God of miracles, signs, wonders. He is God who can give you a favor, favor, favor with, with man. And favor, of course, when the favor with God, you get the favor with man. God who will serve, he is also God who can bring the increase, who can enlarge our territory. Amen. So, and as we, as the people of God, we continue to build and more build relationship with our Heavenly Father. He will continue through the work of the Holy Spirit, will guide our steps, direct our steps. As we continue to hear His voice, and see, a lot of times people can hear His voice, but do you obey? Do you obey? Sometimes you hear his voice, you know you have to do that, but you postpone, like, okay, I will do that later. See, that's also a form of disobedience. Why we are, as a parents, teaching our children to obey? Because obedience is better than sacrifice. So when we obey our Heavenly Father, he will obviously reward us because when your child is obeying you, oh, you want to bless that child. But when your natural child walking in disobedience, 
you want to give that child a consequences, remove certain things, right? Instead of aiding something, you want to hold something. So that's why we teach our children in the way of the Lord and teaching the children to obey because when we teaching them obey the parents, when they grow up, they will learn also to obey God because if they can obey parents who they see, how they can obey God who they never see. And we as a parents, we are representative of, of the kingdom. We are representative of, of God in the children's life. So how we talk to them, what we do, not what we even say about God, but how we will live before them, right? Our dedication to God, to teach our children to, to pray. My daughter today, for example, she has some test at the <laughs> summer camp, and she has some real challenge in the past to pass the test because it's a swimming test and it's a requirements, certain um, ways to swim and they wanna make sure that she does what she's supposed to do because for her safety. So she was really nervous because in the past she has really challenged to pass that test. But see, before even that test, I'm as a mother, I said, you know what, let's we pray and we, pray because she was really nervous. She want to pass that test and I know she want to pass this test. And so we pray and we say, Lord, let that test will be a test and that she will do a good job. And you know, we present that, you know, that request before Heavenly Father and see what I'm saying. It's not just a Sunday service that we take the children to the church and let them hear the word or you know Wednesday or midweek service whichever way you know you have a day you have a service but it's constantly we demonstrate and live before our children who we really are in Christ it's not just a, our sermon or our preaching but it's also how we live and demonstrate you know before our children for me for example sometimes if i make some mistakes and whatever i acknowledge before my child and i said well i'm <laughs> i did just this god forgive me please lord so i'm acknowledged so i'm i'm teaching my daughter that i do not you know i'm not a perfect person i want to be perfect but Sometimes we make mistakes and we have to acknowledge that mistakes. So, and that's kind of walk before our children. So the same with our Heavenly Father, we build a relationship with our Heavenly Father. He already know when we make mistakes. He already know, right? But when we acknowledge that mistake before our Heavenly Father and says, Father, I made this mistake, or you can say what it is, you know, I sinned before you, or whatever the situation is in that scenario, you go before Heavenly Father and say, Father, I made a mistake, and I ask you, Lord God, to forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. And see, in the first John 1 and 9, in the first John 1 and 9, it says, God is faithful and he is what? Just to forgive our sins. He faithful and just to forgive us our mistakes. He faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And he is cleans us from all unrighteousness. So when we do wrong things, we go before God and we say, Father, forgive me. But it's not just a lead service. It's truly, truly with your, all of your heart and you acknowledge your own doing and you go before your Heavenly Father and you say, Father, I'm asking you for forgiveness. Right? So that's 
That's we build a relationship. We build a relationship with the Heavenly Father. So when we build a relationship and the Holy Spirit, allow the Holy Spirit enter in that situation. Allow the Holy Spirit to work on us. Allow the Holy Spirit to change us. See, that's so important for us as a people of God to continue to grow in Christ and the way we can grow in Christ is the sincere fellowship with the Heavenly Father, applying the Word of God, have a constantly a prayer life, praying without the ceasing, continue to read the Word, study the Word, know the Word, meditate on the Word, like Pastor Larry says sometimes, speak the Word, that that word of God will be a so important to your spirit. It's like rooted in your spirit. Sometimes if you have even some kind of nightmare or some kind of attack at night or, or during the day, only thing you come out of you is the word of God. The word of God. The word of God. Because see, our sword of the spirit is the word of God. We don't fight our neighbor. We speak the word of God in this situation because the scripture says what? We not go against the flesh and blood, but we go against the what? Principalities and powers and rules of darkness. And God, he gave us a power and authority to use the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, it's not in our own strength. It's not in the strength of Larry Bergens or Olga. We don't have the power. We can we you know, Satan he's a spirit being. And we compare to him. <laughs> Look, he been he been on this earth for a long, long time. But the thing is, for the blood of Jesus, for the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's power we're talking about. That's victory that we're talking about. Through Christ Jesus, we have the victory. Through Christ Jesus, we have the power. And so as we continue to have that fellowship with our Heavenly Father, continue to meditate on His Word, to seek His face, because He is rewarding those who is diligent and seeking Him, and the scripture also says, you abide in him, and he abide in you. See, it's you abide in him, and he abide in you. And I know Pastor Larry like the scripture. And the work which Jesus Christ did in the earth, that you should do also. Hallelujah. So, and that's the, that's the, that's the truth. That is the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The work of what Jesus Christ did on this earth that we should do also. Hallelujah. And, and you know, you can have uh, opportunities all the time to God can bring you people into your path who need that touch from heaven. And we are people, yes, we do live on this earth, but we are representative of heaven. And you are representative of heaven and this earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Well, God is a, <laughs> he is a good God. He is a faithful God. He is a God who will give you the strength and continue to direct your path. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Larry is here. So he's going to be ministering to us tonight. So just... Uh, Get ready, get ready to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, God is good all the time. Amen.
Well, God is good. His mercies is everlasting, and in truth they do it to all generations. That's right. Amen. I want to thank God for today. Amen. And you know, last service we had, we didn't have volume. And I didn't have it when we first started, but I finally got it back on. Thank God for that. Amen. So we are about ready to do what has to be done now. Glory to God. I want to sing you a song tonight. Amen. I want to sing you a song tonight. And we're going to, yeah, it's working. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <coughs> going to sing a song tonight, then we're going to get right into our lesson, okay? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we serve a good God. We serve a good God. I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before. No sad goodbye. Will there be spoken and time won't matter anymore? Put it in my heart, amen. And so I 
decided I want to sing that song. <clears throat> Amen. We've been dealing with the message concerning kingdom authority. Amen. Kingdom understanding, kingdom authority. Amen. And uh, today we're going to we're going to still talk about it, but today we're going to look at something. We're going to look at it a little different. Where do we get this message from? How did this message come about? And how do we actually apply it to our lives? Amen. Understanding the kingdom authorities and walking in it. That's what Jesus did when he came to earth. Amen. Now, as we look at this, we we can look at it, we, we see we see that in the books of the Bible where Jesus came forth and operated in the earth as a king of kings and lord of lords. Amen. How do you what do you what do you mean, Pastor? Well, the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John tells the story about the life of Jesus. Amen. And everything that he did. And and, and then it also tells us that it was you know, in one part of one one book says that if, there, if, if everything was written that he did, there would not be enough books to hold everything that he written. Amen. So I want you to understand some things right here because you see, we've been dealing with this message for some time and I want you to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you concerning this message because it's going to be, it's, going, it's been a fish rare and besides right now we're coming into a, a time where we must hear, know, and understand the kingdom. Amen. And how to operate in the kingdom. We need to know the kingdom and how to operate in the kingdom. Because you see, the world is trying to cause you to doubt that the kingdom even exists. Passing all these laws and stuff like they did in the days of Daniel. Amen. Because they couldn't stop them from believing God. They couldn't stop the man of God from praying one way, so they came against they they came against the the God that He served, Amen. And that's the same thing that is happening today. That's the same thing that is happening today. We need to understand our 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 obligations as children of God and the principles that God has given us to operate by, Amen. So that we won't be I like the I like the word bamboozled. <laughs> so that we won't be taken advantage of. So that we won't miss out on the promises of God. Amen. So we have an objective. The objective is to understand the king that we serve. Amen. To understand the kingdom that we serve. For, for As far as uh, natural uh, 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 ascent, Jesus was born of a Jew. Amen. He was born of a Jew. Amen. He came as king to his own Jewish people before he came to be the king of the Jew, uh, 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 the king over all the world, I guess you might say, over all over all people, Amen. Over all, all believers, Amen. Because he was first introduced to the Jewish people as king, Amen. So now we now, now when the Jews, what did they do? They rejected him as king, Amen. And they said we. He made himself a king. We have Caesar as our king. And that's what they said. And so now we see that the Jews rejected Jesus as king. And then Jesus, uh, when, the, when the disciples began their ministry, they was commissioned by the Spirit of God to go to the Gentiles. And this is why, this is why, this is how we became part of the family of God, because of the rejection of that he experienced from his own people that the gospel was sent to the Gentiles who we are. Amen. Now, as we have come to, as we, if he has come to us now, so God wants us to know and understand who we are as children of God and as kings, as, as, as children of God. Amen. See, he was, uh, he was questioned as uh, whether or not he was the Expected king, amen. In the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse number 11, let's just look at it 27 11. 
I'm going to, we're going to be going through the scriptures as we go through this because I want you to I want you to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you. Amen. I want you to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you because as you hear and understand, <clears throat> see you help you help reliable to it. Amen. So notice what he said in, in Matthew chapter 27, verse number 11. And Jesus stood before the governor, the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest, Amen. Thou sayest, Amen. And when he was accused, and when he was accused of chief, and when he was accused of the chief priest and the elders, he answered nothing. Why? Because he didn't. He had no need to ask. He knew who he was. He knew his purpose. He never. He never went. He never did anything wrong concerning the purpose that he came. Amen. He knew his purpose. And then look at the book of Mark chapter Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15. And look at verse uh, look at verse number. Let's see. Mark chapter 15. And let's see how we want to enter this. Uh, verse number 1 and 2. Mark chapter 15 verse 1 and 2. And straightway in the morning the chief priest held a uh, council consolation with the elders and strives and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. Amen. Look at verse number two. And Pilate asked him, Art thou, listen to this again, the king of the Jews? And he answered, said unto him, Thou sayest it. See, Jesus, he didn't have to, he didn't, he didn't have to uh, give an account for who he was. He allowed them to call him who he was. Amen. God wants you to see yourself as God called you. Amen. And, and, and you don't need someone to pat you on your back and, and, and make you feel like you're uh, who you are when God has already assigned to you your responsibilities as a child of God. See, God has given us authority in the earth to operate as kings and priests to declare and to decree. And when we don't take our positions in the earth as God has ordained us to, now there's a there's a, a what they call a government that is ruling that is set up in high office of our lands and are ruling, amen. And they are establishing laws, amen, and, and, and legislatures, legislators, however you pronounce it, to bring you, the church, under its ruling. And when you don't abide by their ruling, their laws, then you are in contempt. And by you being in contempt, you are breaking the natural laws that is going against the laws of God, which God has supreme authority. Amen. Because God is the one who established law. Amen. Oh my God. How can I how how can we how can we get this and 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 apply to our lives knowing that knowing that our time in this earth as we are as we see is coming close and coming fast to an end because Jesus is coming soon and the devil knows that his time is running out amen and if he can keep you in bondage you won't have no problem when they when the when the when the new world order comes in and issue you and issue out the uh, the 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 seal, the seal the seal in the forehead or in the or in your on your hand, what they call it, the mark of the beast. You won't have no problem to give in to it. Why? Because you've been you've been trained right now to obey their laws, even though they're ungodly. Oh my God! Uh, I hope I hope I hope I'm making good sense because see God is calling us to take our position as 
as children of God and begin to exercise kingdom authority in the earth. Amen. Oh my God, this is this is this is not this is not nothing what I thought I was going to be talking about today. But God is the one that's bringing this out because you see, when God created man, God created man a little lower than Himself, and God gave man authority to dominate the earth, to rule and reign in the earth. If you don't believe, look at Genesis chapter one. Verse number 26. And God said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. And let them have dominion over all the work of our hands. Amen. God knows exactly how he created us to dominate. But then man rebelled against God, just like the world is doing today. And sinned against God. And this is why, this is why we have these struggles today. Because of man rebellious nature sinful nature but God is so merciful God is so kind God is so loving that he gave man a second chance what do you mean pastor he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life he restored us back into the relationship, the proper relationship with Almighty God through his death, burial, and resurrection, and the shedding by the shedding of his blood through death, burial, resurrection, we have access now to the kingdom of God once again. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Y'all, y'all look at me like I'm like 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 what is he talking about? Yeah, but I know what I'm talking about. Amen. God is calling us, the church, to take our position and begin to walk in the authority that he has given us. And if we do it, we can bring about the greatest change in the earth, in the land, like the earth has never seen before. Amen. Since the early church, the disciples, they, made, they, they, made, they, they, they turned the world upside down with the gospel. Amen. They turned the, the world upside down with the gospel. Now just think, if we, God's disciples today, will get a hold of the principles and the, and, and the precepts and the concept of what Jesus did and what he taught his disciples to do, and we begin to do the same works that they did, glory to God. Just think, if we would do that, the world would look at us and they'll think we, got, we lost it all. Amen. They'll think we have lost it all. Why? Because we are not like them. We have been... We've been the Bible tells us in the in the Roman chapter twelve, verse number two, is that and be not conformed to this world. We're not we're not conforming ourselves to this world. We're com we're being transformed by renewing of our mind. Amen. And this is why this is why oftentimes when God gives an assignment, the anointing there begins to it begins to butt heads. It begins to come against the the principles that the that the the, the kingdom of darkness. Is trying to display or setting up. That's why. That's why when a man of God, a woman of God, began to operate in the principles that God had set them, they begin to experience. Uh, they begin to experience uh, what they call that uh, the, uh, 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 pressure from the opposite kingdom. They begin to experience pressure from the opposite kingdom. They begin to experience. They begin to experience uh, the, the, the attacks. On their mind, their will, their emotion, and they begin to they begin to uh, go, go through changes. Why? Because the devil is doing. He's going to do everything he can to interfere with your mission. And this is why God has called us to understand the authority of the kingdom and walk in it. Amen. Understand the authority of the kingdom and begin to walk in it. glory to God because. You see, when we start to understand it and start walking in, we're going to see the manifestation of God's presence so strong, so good, so 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 fair that that that, that Jesus Christ, my God, when His name is mentioned, devil's going to flee. Devil's going to flee. Amen. Why? Because we are we we are connecting ourselves to the true King of the earth. The maker and creator. Not some someone that wants to be a king. Not someone that trying to exalt himself above the things of God, trying to make himself be like God. 
someone trying to he making counterfeit out of everything that is pure. He counterfeiting it and make it look like he's the one that's in control. The devil is not in control, folks. God is in control. God is in control. Amen. 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 Now look at now look at uh, he 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 was accused of being of Satan rather than of God. Well, you find that see this this is this is this is, this is what I'm talking about in the book of Matthew once again chapter twelve in the book of Matthew chapter twelve. Amen. You see, when he can't have his way, he he accuses, he make accusations to cause you to. To, to lose focus, to cause you to lose hope, to cause you to lose sight of what you really are, uh, are supposed to be doing. But notice what he said right here. Notice, notice what the scripture said right here in, in Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. And look at verse number, look at verse number 25. Matthew chapter 12. Look at verse number 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts. <coughs> and Jesus knew their thoughts. And said unto them, every kingdom, now this, this is what he said now, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to what? Desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against itself. How shall then his kingdom stand. Amen. How shall then his kingdom stand? Look at verse number 27. And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judge. But if I cast out devils by the what? The Spirit of God. Woo! There it is. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, verse 28, then the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. So now, that helped me to understand that the kingdom of God, as 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20 said, the kingdom of God is not in word only, but in power. Amen. So if the kingdom of God is in power, and I'm operating in that power, then when I take a bold stand for the kingdom of God and, and, and begin to cast out devils, the, it's not Beelzebub casting out devils. It's not devil. The devil is not going to cast himself out. The devil is not going to cast himself out. But if I, by the Spirit of God, cast out devils, then the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. The kingdom of God is manifest. Why? Because I'm walking in the power of the kingdom. I'm walking in the authority of the kingdom. What do you mean? When I'm casting out devil, when I'm ministering to the sick, when I'm when I'm laying hands on the, on the, on the people and releasing the anointing that God puts upon my ministry and upon my life, glory to God. I am operating in kingdom principles. In kingdom principles. Amen. And the kingdom of God is manifesting on the behalf of them whom he has sent me to. Amen, amen, amen. So now look at what verse number 28 again. It said, but if I cast out devils, Matthew 12, 28, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Amen. The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Look at verse number 29. It's, it's just, this is all interesting. This is, this, is very, this is good stuff. Amen. Or else how can... One enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he shall spoil his goods. Remember what he said in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse number 16, I think. Matthew chapter 16, verse number. Let me look, let me let me make sure. Let me make sure. Let me make sure them. Matthew 16. Amen. Glory to God. Matthew 16. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Boy, I tell you what, God is so good. God is so good. Amen. Notice what He said right here now, in, right here in in, uh, in uh, uh, Matthew chapter chapter sixteen. Amen. And look at verse number eighteen. And I say also unto you that thou art Peter, 
And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Note what he said, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. God told me one time, he said, Larry, I've given you the keys to the church. And I said, oh my God. And I went and told my pastor what God said. That was a mistake. <laughs> I went and told him what he said. He said, oh, <laughs> I'm not talking about your church. <laughs> God, I'm just talking about what God told me. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to claim nothing. I'm just saying. I'm just. Hey, hey my, I tell you what, that was a mistake. I shouldn't. I, I found it. No, it's gonna be a mistake. I never would say anything. But notice what he said, verse number, verse number nineteen again. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom, the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. See, operating in the kingdom. Walking in the kingdom of authority, you have the obligation, you have the right to bind the spirit of wickedness. You have a right to bind the kingdom of darkness. You have a right to take a stand. Amen. And God has said in his word, knows what he said. Knows what he said. Verse number 19. Knows what he said. Verse number 19. Amen. And, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be what? Bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. God is going to back up your decision as you stand on the principles of the authority that God has given you. God is not going to allow his word to fall to the ground, especially when God is called, has placed you in a position to, to speak directly to the powers that are coming against are working or uh, contrary against his will. Remember what he said in Ephesians chapter 6? Ephesians chapter 6, he said, Oh, verse number 12, I think. Let me just turn that. Oh my God. This he's just taking me now. He's just taking me, but I love it when he do me like this. I love it when he do me like this. Amen. Now notice what he said, verse number 12. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality, against powers, against the rulers of the dark of this world, against spiritual weakness in our places. Amen. You see, we, when we when we understand our position and understand the authority that God has given us, we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the dark of this world, against spiritual weakness in our places. And this is why God said, Wherefore take unto you, verse number 13, Ephesians 6, 13, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. Amen. The whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and have done all to stand. Stand therefore. Amen. You see, when you when he when he said stand therefore, he tell you how to stand. He said, stand therefore with your long girdle about with what? With truth. And have it on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shone with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, he said, taking a shield of faith. In other words, you're not going to be moved by the circumstances. You're not going to walk by the situation. You're going to walk by faith. You're going to know that you know that you know that as you take a bold stand on the word of God, you are not standing alone. You're not standing in your strength. You're not standing in your wisdom. You're not standing in your education. You are standing in the wisdom and in the knowledge of God himself. And God confirms his word with signs follow. Hallelujah. God confirms his word with signs follow. Oh my God. My God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So when I look at when I see what when I when I when I when I'm looking at the king of the kingdom, when I look at the ministry of the king, I'm looking actually at my ministry. Amen. Why? Because he, I abide in him and he abide in me. Amen. He and I are one. The kingdom of God reside on the inside of me. Amen. And on the inside of you. And as, and as, and as a child of the king, I operate in kingdom principles. Why? Because I've been ordained to do so. I've been commanded to do so. Amen. Not because I'm so special, even though he chose me <laughs> when I was a uh, when when I was yet in my mother's womb, he called me and he ordained me. 
Amen. And then he and then he said, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Amen. You've been called out and separated. Amen. Glory to God. So I believe that God is talking to us today because God is preparing the church for the things that is coming in the very near future. This is why it's so important that we hear what the Spirit of God is saying about understanding kingdom authority. Understanding kingdom authority. Because now he, 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 he wants you to start uh, not just understanding, he wants you to start walking in it. He wants you to start walking in kingdom authority. Amen. He wants you to start walking in kingdom authority. Why? Because the devil is doing, he's doing the same thing as he did in Daniel's day. Amen. And they are changing laws to stop you from accomplishing God's purpose and God's plan in the earth. They want, they, they want to silence the church. Now, in some countries right now, they already been silent. Amen. I saw that and I said, oh my God. I forgot where I saw that. But I but when I saw that, it just, just took my breath away. I said, oh my God. And and I know that that's the same thing that is trying to work its way in our country, America. And if America be overtaken, guess what, folks? The whole world is gone. The whole world is gone. That's why we must understand what God is saying to us. We must understand that God has given us the keys to the kingdom. And he said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Amen. God has said, whatever you declare, whatever you decree, it shall be established. It shall be established. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God wants you clothed in your armor. He wants you walking as kings and priests. Stop depending on your strength and start depending on his strength. God don't want you to try to, to step in, walk out in your own ability, in your own knowledge to try to accomplish something that he called you to do. God wants you to yield to his strength. He wants you to yield to his wisdom. He wants you to yield to his knowledge. Because there's no defeat in his wisdom, in his strength, and in his knowledge. You're only defeated when you try to do it in yourself. Hallelujah. You're only defeated and try to do it in yourself. Amen. And then look what it says in Mark, in Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Amen. You see, on one occasion, the people tried to take Jesus and make him a king. They tried to make him a king. Amen. Look what it said in Luke chapter 11 and verse number. Let's look at verse number 17. <clears throat> Luke chapter 11. Look at verse number 17. But he, but he knowing their thoughts said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And that's what we just talked about a right, while right ago. Amen. Notice what he said. And every house divided against itself shall fall. If Satan be divided against himself, how then shall his kingdom stand? Because if ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub, and if I and if by Beelzebub, and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judge. But if I with the finger of God, notice he said this time with the finger of God. <laughs> See how he reworded that? This time he said with the finger of God. Oh, hallelujah. 
But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come unto you, come upon you. When a strong man When a strong man arm keep keep his uh, palace, his go his goods are in place, are in, are, are in peace. Amen. But when a strong a stronger than him shall come upon him and overtake him, he's taken he taken him he taken from him all his armor, wherein he trusted and divided his spoils amen divided his spoils amen God see the spoils of the enemy are yours we are not to be his spoils that's why God wants you to understand your position this is why he wants you to understand the authority that you operate in because God has when, when the church of Israel, oh, look at it this way. Look at it this way. Before the church of Israel came out of Egypt, what did they do? They spoiled the Egyptians. They took all of their valuables. Amen. And they spoiled them. And they left Egypt from bondage wealthy. <laughs> wealthy. <laughs> Amen. How do they? They had to be wealthy to get out there in the wilderness to build a calf made out of gold. Amen. How could they do that though? And defy the one that brought them out of bondage. God doesn't want you to, to take that what he had blessed you with and use it against him. God wants you to take that what he had blessed you with and walk in the principles of the guidelines that he has set before us. The authority that he has given us is the power to overcome the kingdom of darkness. Amen. To walk in his concept and his precept is God's way of saying, I have given you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. God wants you and me to see ourselves as he sees us. Amen. In John chapter 6, verse number 15. John chapter 6 and verse number 15. And it says, John 6 and verse number 15. There we go. And it says, when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into the mountains himself alone. Amen. See, they can't make him to be something that he already is. <clears throat> In other words, they wanted to see him establish an earthly kingdom when the kingdom that he was to establish was not an earthly kingdom. It was a spiritual kingdom. A spiritual kingdom. But they want to take him by force and make him establish an earthly kingdom. Why? Because they wanted to rule under him as, 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 as his subjects. But no. Jesus, when he found out what they was trying to do to him, he departed from them and he went up in a mountain alone. He went up in a mountain alone. Glory to God. Verse number, verse number 16 said, and when, the, and, when, and when even was come, now come, his disciples went down unto the sea and entered into the ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. He was not come to them. And the sea arose in reason, by reason of a great wind and blew so that when they rode about five to twenty to thirty furlong they saw 
Jesus, they see Jesus. Know what he said now? They see Jesus doing what? Walking on the sea. They see Jesus walking on the sea. Now, see, we've been looking at it from the book of Matthew, chapter, chapter what, 14? But now we see it right here in the book of John, chapter 6. Jesus walking on the sea. Amen. See, when you walk with God, you're going to walk in the authority of his word. And you might find yourself walking in a supernatural that's going to cause you to rise up and to walk on water. My God, when you love to walk on water, you know, you know, when it rained, this is what I used to say when it was raining. I said, when it, I used to say, I'm walking on water. Look at me. I'm walking. Because <laughs> it's raining. The ground is wet. I said, I'm walking on water. Amen. But God, Son, Jesus, and Peter, they walked on water. And wouldn't that be a sight to see? Oh, hallelujah. Only once there was a, there was a public crime of Jesus as king. This was when he came into Jerusalem for the final time in Matthew chapter 21 and verse number Matthew 21 verse 1 through 9. Let's just read it because I, we want to get we want to get you the full knowledge of what God was talking about here. Because see, when you see the principles of God manifesting in your life because of the word's sake, you're going to find yourself being drawn to God in a, in a very unique way as you have never experienced before. Why? Because the moment you begin to experience the supernatural, yeah, oh my God, you're going to want more of it. I know I do. When I experience the supernatural, I want, I want to experience more and more of it. Why? Because when God moves in you and through you on behalf of people, amen, it's, it, brings, it brings God right there on the scene that causes you to to set the natural man to set to, to step back that the spiritual man will take a the lead amen because the bible said in first john 4 4 ye are of god little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world when 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 the greater one takes a stand, the lesser one stand back and allow the greater ones to do what he want to do. That's what I like about walking in the supernatural. I like to sit back and let God take a stand and have his way. See, someone said that, that uh, some, some, somebody told me the other day that, that they said that they, they love the message that I preach because I preach down the, I preach where they can understand what I'm saying and understand the scripture. And I said, "Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a, 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 a preacher's what preaching words what people don't understand. I, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I don't have that type of education where I can preach those type of words like a lot of people have. Amen. I'm, I'm just, I'm just what God created me to be. I'm no more, no less." Amen. But the thing about it is this, folks. When God began to use you, when God began to anoint you and when God began to use you, it has nothing to do with your education. It has nothing to do with how much college you have, how many degrees behind your name. It has everything to do with you yielding to the will of God, to the plan of God, to the purpose of God. For such a time as that, he has called you has nothing to do with education. God takes the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Amen? So don't think that you have to be all educated to be used by God because you don't. All you have to be is willing and be a yielded vessel. So it says in, 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 in uh, what did I say now? Uh, Matthew, Matthew 21 Matthew 20, verse 1 through 9, let's see. And when they drew near, when they drew nigh unto the Jerusalem and were come, this is Matthew 21, verse 1. I'm reading verse 
starting at verse number one. And when they and when they drew near nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethpazer unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find a, a donkey tied and a coat with her, loose them and bring them unto me. Verse number three. And if they, and if any man say aught unto you, say ye shall, ye shall say the Lord has need of them, and straightway he will, he will send them. And all this was done, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Ezekiel by the prophet saying, tell the, tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, the king, those we said now, the king come. Now this is the only time that we, that we have talked about, we've been reading, that Jesus called himself a king. Amen. This is the only time, we went through a lot of scripture here, but this is the only time where we hear him mention himself as king. But notice that verse number five, Verse 5, Matthew 20, verse 5. Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon a donkey, and a coat of a foal of a donkey. They don't say donkey, I'm saying donkey. <laughs> well, they said something else. Amen. And verse number 6 says, And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the donkey and the coat, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon, and a very great multitude spread their garment in the way. Others cast down, cut down branches from the from, from the trees and straw them in the way. And the multitude that went before him, that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Hosanna in the highest. So we see here, amen, that but but you know how they honored him when he told them that the king, your king cometh meek and sitting upon a donkey. Amen. Glory to God. And notice how notice how they notice how they how they how they how they reacted. Many of those who cried Hosanna as Jesus rode in to Jerusalem were shouting, crucify him. Many of those probably all of them. Amen. All of them that were shouting for him, all of them that was that was that cheering him on. And when it when and when it when it come when it when, when it goes to point the pilot, they was all, those same people all standing out there, and Pilate couldn't find no fault in him, but he said, "Crucify him! Crucify him!" Because he made himself a king. He didn't make himself a king. He is the king. King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I, I believe that God is speaking to our hearts and he's trying to let us know that it's time for us to begin to walk in the, in the place, in the position that he called us to walk so that our lives can make a difference in the land in days to come. Because the world is going to be the world is already looking for the manifestation of the sons of God. The earth is groaning and trembling and waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. Judgment is already hitting the land. Look at the disasters that is taking place all over. Look at the flooding that is taking place. Look at the rock sliding that is taking place. Look at the, the look at all the disasters that is happening all around us. 
Amen. Look at the heat waves that is going out throughout the throughout the, the land. And look at the, the, the my God. The judgment of is already come upon the land. And guess what, folks? It's time for you and me, the church, to begin operating in kingdom principles, walking in divine authority, bringing about the will of God in our nation concerning the souls. Many people are going into eternity right now without Christ. And we need to get on our job. We need to be by our Father's business. Father, I have declared what you placed in my heart for the day. And I know, God, that it's not a popular message, but I know, God, this is what you want me to preach. And that's all that matters to me, that I'm doing exactly what you placed on my heart to do. And I'm asking you, Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone that's heard this message from this day forward, Lord, let it rest upon their heart. Let them begin to see themselves as you see them. Let them see themselves coming out of their comfort zone, even as Peter come out of the ship to walk on the water. So let the people that hear this message come out of their comfort zone. And Father, even though they may be ridiculed, let them take that bold step of faith and say, I will take the keys of the kingdom that has been allotted to me, and I will stand my ground. I will preach the truth no matter what. I will hold fast to the confession of my faith. I will not allow fear to torment me. I will not allow, allow, allow unbelief to redirect me. I will keep my focus on the one who have called me, and I will walk by faith and not by sight. This is what God is wanting us to do, folks. Don't allow yourself to be pulled down and trotted upon like a, 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 a grasshopper or a, a, a ant walking, crawling on the ground. Don't allow yourself to be trampled upon. Take a bold stand and, and stand firm on your conviction. And know that Jesus Christ is not going to leave you nor forsake you. And that what he said in Isaiah 41, verse number 10, that he, will, that he is our God, that he is with us, and he will never leave us, he will not forsake us. Amen. He said, he said it. He said, I am your God. Let him be the God to you that he said he is. And let him walk with you. Let him talk with you. Let him show you that you can do it. The works that he did. John 14, 12. He said, the works that I do shall you do also. And great works that shall you do because I go to my Father. Let him show you that you can do the works. Amen. Glory to God. We love you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, I tell you what. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Father, I thank you for this message. I thank you, Lord God, for those that have an ear. They will hear what the Spirit of God is saying to them. And I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch every heart, every soul, that you would transform every life, Father. Help us to see ourselves, Father, as you see us, walking by faith and not by sight, understanding the authority of the kingdom of God and walking in it, walking in it, demonstrating it, showing the world that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. God, I bless your name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you today. We appreciate you. Amen. It's time for us to take about eating an offering. Those that want to sow a seed, you can go to my website, Lightbrook Ministries. Amen. You can go to my website, LightbrookMinistries.com. You can plant your seed there. And that's Lightbrook Ministries. That's one word, Lightbrook Ministries. That's one word. Amen. And you can plant your seed there. And uh, also, you can use your cash app. You can use Demo. Amen. And uh, you can also uh, use PayPal. Amen. And those of you that want to use Zelle, you can use Zelle. Just put my email in Zelle. Amen. And you can use Zelle to do it also, those that use Zelle. Amen. But meanwhile, let's pray. Father, I thank you for 
this people. I thank you, Lord God, that your hand continually rest upon them. I thank you, Father, that you have given us an opportunity to sow a seed, God. You said ever since the world been, there's always been seed time and harvest. And Father, as we take advantage of this opportunity, you also said in your word that you will rebuke the devourer for our sake and that you will cause our ground to give forth its fruit in this season. As we honor you by giving you the 10% that you have already said was yours. And as we give it, Father, willingly and cheerfully, God, you bless the cheerful giver. And you cause us to experience a breakthrough in our finances. So, Father, as we give, we give willingly and cheerfully in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and sow your seed. Amen. And also missions. If you scroll that thing down a little bit, you see that last one in the corner says missions. Amen. If you want to sow a seed for missions, amen, you're welcome to do that. Amen. Also. And uh, we will appreciate all the help, all your support. Those that want to be a part of the missions, amen, you can sow a seed for missions right here, amen. And when you send your check, maybe just let right there in the comments, right there at the title, just put uh, missions, and amen, and we'll make sure that it go to missions, amen. Because right now, everything that is not tied, we send it as missions. We send it to mission. Amen. Because the tithe goes to the church of God. The mission fund, it goes straight to the mission account. Amen. And I thank God for you for doing that. Father, I just bless your people once again. And I thank you for all that you're doing in their heart to support the work that you're calling us to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be here today and say, Pastor, I never made Jesus Christ Lord of my life, and I want to get my heart right with God today. Pastor, will you please pray for me, because I feel like I'm out of place, and if I would die right now in this condition, I don't know, I don't know if, I don't know if, I don't know if I'm going to make it. But Pastor, I believe that the word that you spoke has ministered to my heart, and I want to make things right with God. And if that's you, you want to make things right with God. You can say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, say it. Don't procrastinate. Don't put it off. Don't say you got plenty of time. Well, I know some people said that, and that very night that they said that to me, there was a phone call coming. They was dead and not, they didn't have all the time they had. They thought they had. They died that very night. They, after they said they had plenty of time, they cussed me out and got in the car and took off, and they died that very night. Amen. So don't think you have all the time. God, time is in God's hand, not yours. So say this prayer with me right now. Say it and mean it. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sin. Today, I confess my sin and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. If you say that simple prayer right now, I want you to know that God heard your prayer. And right now, he's rejoicing over you. Why? Because you was dead to trespasses and sin. And now you have come alive unto the kingdom of God through salvation. Amen. God bless you. We thank God for you. Amen. 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 Now, anyone need prayer? No? Okay. Then let's pray. And let's go home. Father, we pray for those that with us by the internet. We release our faith on their behalf. We thank you, Lord God, that your hand rests upon them, that you will bring them to a place, Father, of inner peace. Let their hope be restored. Let their faith 
exceed, go, let their faith begin to rise to the next level and let them begin to experience your goodness and your mercy. Father, I bless them now in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you again on Sunday morning. God bless you. This is Pastor Larry. Be blessed. Have a good day. Bye-bye.